Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture on volume meshing. This particular lecture is part of the ICM CFD lecture series within the course CFD modeling using ANSYS Fluent and ANSYS ICM CFD. This lecture will introduce us to volume meshing within the software ANSYS ICM CFD. In this lecture, we will see various options and methodologies that are related to volume meshing, how to perform volume meshing within ANSYS ICM CFD and other visualization and mesh creation options. Before we begin, let us get a feel of the workflow when we are creating volume mesh. What operations or what process we have to follow in order to make volume mesh within ANSYS ICM CFD. Let's say we have an original geometry which is a CAD file or a CAD model. Out of that we extract the fluid domain which means we extract the volume within which we are going to perform CFD. Parts such as bolts, fixtures and other solid CAD parts which are not to be included within the CFD domain will be cleaned up and excluded when we are creating fluid domain. So the first step is to extract the fluid domain from the original geometry. Then the next step is to perform a surface mesh. This gives a better control on the quality of final volume mesh that we are going to do. So it is a general practice that we create a surface mesh before we prepare a volume mesh. After surface mesh, we create the volume mesh. Some of the parameters for distribution of the volume mesh are taken from the surface mesh and the rest of the volume mesh parameter we input separately. Now there is also a way to actually just bypass the surface mesh and create the volume mesh directly. We generally avoid this but if it is a simple geometry we can cre directly create the volume mesh. But creating a surface mesh before creating a volume mesh gives us a better control over distribution and it is always used when the geometry is complex. Let us now see what does volume meshing mean. Volume meshing is a way of filling volumes by 3D elements. We call this procedure as discretizing the volume domain. Volume meshing can be further divided into structured, multi-blocked mesh and unstructured auto volume mesh. Unstructured mesh is not as tedious as a multi-block hexa mesh. Within hexa mesh we try to fit a structured type of mesh within the entire volume which takes a larger effort than just meshing the volume with an unstructured mesh. Now this volume mesh that we are talking about consists of various small cells or elements. These elements have different shapes and depending upon their shapes they have been given different names. Three elements are available in hexa form, in tetra form, in prism or in pyramid form. As you can see different types of 3D elements are shown here. There is the tetrahedron, the hexahedron, the prism type of mesh, the pyramid, the polyhedron. So all these are 3D volume elements. Usually whenever we are trying to do a CFD analysis we encounter a lot of 3D problems rather than a 2D problems. 2D problems are much simpler and they are easy to mesh whereas in 3D it takes a lot of effort to mesh the domain or to mesh the geometry. So all these volumes are meshed using volume mesh. You can see an example of volume mesh here. It is important to note that polyhedron is a type of 3D element but it is not available in ICM CFD. Volume meshing is generally used in different type of TFD applications like internal external flow simulations, thermal analysis, structural analysis etc. Let us now see different types of schemes or algorithms within volume meshing. Depending upon what sort of inputs or what sort of uh, CAD geometry we are going to consider or model, there are two types of algorithms or schemes that we can use. First is volume mesh from geometry that is creating directly volume mesh from the CAD model. In this we have the octree type of algorithm or scheme. It is pretty robust. What it does is it walks over small features and holes and it just creates a volume mesh directly from the CAD geometry. Various mesh density options can be used in this. Next is Cartesian. This creates pure Cartesian and unstructured Cartesian meshes. It is fast method to create a volume mesh and it can produce structured as well as unstructured meshes. These methods directly apply to creating volume mesh from geometry. Then the other method or algorithm is to create volume mesh from surface mesh. This is generally used methodology and in this various algorithms are available. We have the Delaunay or the T grid type of algorithm. This is the quickest method available. We can specify different types of mesh densities or mesh distribution in this. It produces uniform mesh than what is produced by the direct octree method. 
then we have the advanced front type of algorithm by this we can control smooth mesh transition and growth the cell count is less than the octree method next method or algorithm is hex core this is used to reduce the cell count what it does is that the bulk or the core region is meshed by hexa and the rest can be an unstructured or a tetra type of mesh the last algorithm within the volume mesh from surface mesh is hex dominant in this hexa cells are dominant reducing the mesh count Now let us see the two procedures for creating volume mesh. In the method one that we saw, what we do is we import or create a geometry, then we perform geometry cleanup, extract the fluid domain, and we create and name different parts that are available in within the CAD model. After this, we directly move on to the volume mesh setup. Within this, we select the mesh type. It can be tet, Cartesian, or hex dominant. Then we select the mesh method, which can be either octree, Delaunay, body fitted. hex core staircase etc then we set the parameters in selected mesh method after this we give the mesh size setup in this we can either use the global mesh setup where we give the overall global mesh limit and mesh sizes or we can use the local mesh setup in which we give either the surface mesh parameters or the local curve mesh parameters then we define the volume or body points now basically icm does not have a concept of volume so to define entire volume for meshing what we need to do is we define multiple volumes using multiple body points body points are associated with volumes and when we define a body point that is the volume that will be considered for meshing after this we define mesh density for this we can use octree method this specifies the mesh density in volume where mesh can be defined further now there was method 2 as you can remember where we can actually use a surface mesh to create the volume mesh this method 2 comes into picture at this stage we can create a surface mesh or directly load a available surface mesh as we have discussed in the shell meshing lecture this gives us better control over the volume mesh that we are going to create the volume mesh quality depends on this particular shell or surface mesh quality and we can better control the final volume mesh by actually using a surface mesh also a surface mesh that is created in let's say some other software can also be imported in order to control our final volume mesh so this surface mesh can be used in method 2 and using this also we can come to final compute mesh this creates the final volume mesh by either by either using the method 2 or either using method 1 in method 2 we are directly using or creating a surface mesh in order to create the final volume mesh in method 1 we are starting from geometry clean up volume meshing parameters and then we are arriving to the final volume mesh after computing mesh we can also add prisms these are necessary to create a very well extruded boundary layer along walls which are important from the point of view of resolving the turbulent flow or the flow around walls in details so we can create prism mesh also and then merge it with the volume mesh to create a overall highly resolved volume mesh we will now see volume mesh types in order to mesh a volume in icm cft we go into mesh then into global mesh setup then we go into volume meshing parameters and then we select which type of volume mesh do we need are we going to use it can be tetra mix or hexa dominant or cartesian first let us see the tetra mix type in the tetra mix type unstructured all tet is most commonly used it uses tetra elements while others like prism quad hexa are used depending upon what requirement or what geometry we have in this we have the hexa core which is a type of a tetra mixed mesh as you can see hex where the core of the uh, geometry is meshed using hex it generates hexahedral mesh elements in bulk region gap between the hexa elements and the surface elements is filled by delaunay meshing algorithm we will see the delaunay meshing algorithm in further slides it reduces the mesh count drastically pyramid element will be used to connect hexa elements to tri elements that is in between the hexa elements and the tri elements there will be pyramid elements we also have the prism type of mesh elements Prism elements are created when surface mesh is excluded in normal direction. Prism elements are mostly used or created when surface mesh is about to be extruded in the normal direction. Quad surface elements give hexa while tri gives prism elements. Whenever we exclude quad we get hexa type of elements that is hexa type of prism elements while when we exclude extrude tri we get prism type of elements. 
We create prism elements mainly because within wall bounded flows, pressure drop or heat transfer is to be calculated and for that we need a better resolution of mesh near the wall surfaces. That's why prism mesh is generally created. We also have merge mesh. We will see all these in detail in the coming slides. Let us have a brief overview of the hexa dominant mesh. As you can see, hexa dominant mesh type can be selected within the mesh parameters. In this, you will see good quality hexa mesh is created wherever possible. Tetra mesh or tetra elements are used in order to somehow complete the mesh or connect the different type of hexa elements within the complex regions. Surface is meshed with paving scheme, quad element dominate the surface. Surface elements extrude in normal direction in the volume, create a good quality mesh near surface. The remaining portion of the volume is meshed with tetra, which may be of a lower quality. Cartesian mesh is also a type of uh, hexadominant. The next type of mesh is Cartesian. Cartesian is a top-down meshing algorithm. As you can see this algorithm, it cuts the volume element its size reduces to specified maximum size. Cartesian mesher does not require an existing surface mesh. It ignores local surface meshes and directly creates a volume mesh. There are different types that are available, staircase, body fitted and hexacore. We will see this in detail in the coming slides. This is just a pictorial representation of a Cartesian mesh. The staircase type is shown here and the body fitted type is shown here.